Okay, V wires. Okay, everyone. So in this video, we're going to discuss V wires and you want to take advantage of V wires. And the reason why is say you don't need to have the Palo Alto routing being a router hub. You don't need the Palo Alto to route traffic on your network. You just want to apply security policies for inbound and outbound traffic between a VLAN um, to the outside. For example, if you have a VLAN that wants to communicate to the outside, you want to apply a specific policies to that VLAN. You can do it this way without having another router hub. In this case, Case, we're gonna perform some rewire configurations uh, we're gonna build a rewire sub interface because we want to take advantage also of not having multiple interfaces assigned to different V wires and the way that you do that it's you allocate a physical interface as a V wire interface and then you connect that virtually and that's the V wire so the V wire what it does is connects to physical interfaces and what you're doing in between it's adding a virtual cable like to say a virtual link that allows that to communicate so the firewall will work in transparent mode it will enforce traffic but your user or your network will not know that you're passing through a stateful firewall so with B wires I can assign sub interfaces or virtual wire interfaces onto zones and then I can put police to traffic I can put security rules between the two B wire instances so we're gonna do a demonstration of how you can do V-wires and uh, it's very straightforward, so let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so this is our scenario. We're going to create sub-interfaces in our virtual wire physical interface. So we have a topology here. We have one switch. This is our distribution switch right here. And we have, by the way, this is a school. So we have VLAN 10. All the students are actually in VLAN 10. So this access switch or distribution switch connects to all of our access switches and VLAN 10 communicates using this trunk interface that goes over Ethernet 1 slash 5 on the switch going to the Palo Alto on Ethernet 1 slash 2. This interface, Ethernet 1 slash 2, is configured in virtual wire mode. We're going to configure this in virtual wire mode. And then once we have that, because this is a trunk, we're going to make a sub interface and tag it on VLAN 10. So we then can police that particular VLAN whilst leaving the other VLAN still flowing without issues. So we want to make sure that we police VLAN 10 by creating a virtual wire sub interface on the same physical sub wire interface. And when it comes to virtual wires, this blue dotted line, this represents a virtual wire. So the virtual wire, basically it's connecting or binding Ethernet 1 slash 2 virtually to Ethernet 1 slash 5. So I'm inside the Palo Alto, I'm basically bridging those two interfaces, Ethernet 1 slash 5 and 1 slash 2 with a virtual wire. So I'm actually cross connecting both of them, you know, connected logically. So, so they're actually connected using this virtual cable. Benefit of doing this is that now I can assign a zone to the ingress traffic which is the traffic that comes from this interface and then add another zone to this interface so i can police traffic inbound and outbound of my firewall for vlan 10 and again there's no routing happening on, on the palo alto this is completely transparent this switch sees this switch completely transparent end to end so for the switch perspective they just see a patch going to this side. Obviously on the Palo Alto, we can prune protocol. So for example, you can allow LDP, but you know, block STP. So the Palo Alto can also filter that. But for this instance, we're just gonna go ahead and connect using a virtual wire, ethernet one slash two and one slash five. And then we're gonna make a policy that will allow this VLAN 10 to reach the core. And we're gonna have the default gateway for VLAN 10 configure on the core. So this switch will have an interface on VLAN 10 and this core will have the default gateway for the student wired subnet and this switch right here should be able to ping this default gateway once we build the virtual wire sub interface and we apply the policy to allow this traffic go through. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin and we'll go from there. Okay, like I show you on the uh, slide, we have this distribution switch, and this distribution switch is on VLAN 10. I have a sub interface, a VLAN interface on VLAN 10, and the IP address is 10.10.0.2. I also have the core switch, 
which is 10, 10, 0, 1. And we mentioned that we have that going towards the Palo Alto. So the Palo Alto, it's right in the middle between those two switches, the distribution and the core. We're going to go ahead in the Palo Alto. We're going to configure virtual wire. We're going to link those two interfaces together and we're going to configure the policies and we should be able to have IP reachability end to end. Let's go ahead and go to the Palo Alto. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to network interfaces and we're going to select Ethernet 1 slash 2 and 1 slash 5. Those are my two interfaces. And if you like, we can go back onto the uh, visual diagram. And uh, like I mentioned, distribution switch, the IP is 10.10.0.2. Core switch is 10.10.0.1. And we have Ethernet 1 slash 2 on the Palo Alto. And this is our ingress interface from my VLAN 10, the student wired VLAN. And my egress interface will be Ethernet 1 slash 5. We're going to make both of them virtual wire interfaces and we're going to apply the policies and we should be able to ping end to end between the distribution and the core switch. And that will tell us that we have reachability because we're allowing traffic on the Palo Alto. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, configure this as virtual wire. So we're going to click on the interface. Once inside, we're going to change the interface type into virtual wire. Okay, very important. When we're working with sub interfaces, the parent and Palo Alto refers as the parent virtual wire interface, the physical interface that you're making a virtual wire, where you're going to be configuring those sub interfaces, this is called the parent virtual wire. You're not going to make any configurations, just make it change personality to be a virtual wire and that's it. Because you need to have the physical interface just in virtual wire mode, but no specific configurations to it. Only on the sub interfaces is where you're going to configure the specific VLAN tags. It's very important. This is just an interface type. Press OK. We're going to do the same thing with five. Okay. And once in, same thing, virtual wire. And again, nothing here because this is my parent, my parent virtual wire interface. Okay. And now we should be able to make sub interfaces on 1 slash 2 and 1 slash 5. So you're going to do VLAN 10 on 1 slash 2 because we want to do the student wired VLAN as our first example. And then we need to do a mirror configuration of this sub interface here and here. So let's go ahead and make a sub interface by clicking add sub interface, add a tag of 10. And OK, IP classifier. When you're making a virtual wire interface, that is an untag interface, meaning that you're not tagging a specific VLAN onto it, you can add an IP classifier so you can say, well, anything that matches this particular IP address on the packet flow, treat it as XYZ traffic, and then you can police the traffic based on IP address. In our case, we're just making tagging the VLAN. So anything that flows onto those interfaces and has a tag of 10, we're going to just treat it as, as this particular sub interface. Now we're going to make a security zone. It will be related only to 1 slash 2 10. And this will be our student wire ingress. And I'm going to show you in a bit so you can all connect the dots and understand how this works. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, configure a security zone and we're going to make a virtual wire in a bit but for now we just want to configure the interfaces and then we'll go ahead and configure the virtual wires okay security zone and uh, in this case we're going to make it student v wire because this is our ingress right we're going to press ok and that's it press ok again now we have the first one so we got to do the same thing here because it's always is going to be tagged from two and you got to keep it the same way the palo alto will not be able to tag it you got to make sure that you keep it tagged the same way as it came in and needs to go out. So on five, add a sub interface, put dot 10, tag it with 10. Security zone, this is the big difference. We're ingressing in one two, but we're egressing in one five. So we're leaving the Palo Alto in one five, but we're actually ingressing. We're coming in the Palo Alto in one two. So this will be the egress for the student um, VLAN. Go ahead and uh, create another security zone. And we're going to call this student vWire egress. We're going to press OK. Press OK again. OK, so now we have both of them configured with the respective sub interfaces. Now we got to make a virtual wire so we can connect them virtually in the Palo Alto with this cable right here. We're going to make that blue dotted line. 
and we're going to connect Ethernet 1 slash 2 and 1 slash 5. How will that work? Number one, we got to connect the parent virtual wire. Remember, the parent, this is physical interface that you convert into virtual wire mode. And then we'll also add the sub interface on another vWire configuration. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and click virtual wires. We'll click on add and name. We're going to do the parent vWire. This is our parent vWire interface. The physical 1 slash 2. You see, I am not selecting my sub interface. I am first selecting my physical interface. So we're connecting 1 slash 2 to 1 slash 5. Link state pass through. This is very important. Okay, right now, if I do this, 1 slash 5 will become online. And if 1 slash 2 for some reason goes down, 1 slash 5 remain up. So your switch will not know that the other end of my patch cord. Because remember, we're doing a virtual wire between the two. They think that they're going end to end. The patch cord is just going end to end. But by doing link state pass through, uh, enabling this, it will actually bring the other side down. So if my distribution switch goes down, the Palo Alto will see that this interface came down and it will bring this guy down again. It will disable this interface. It will tell the core, hey, you just lost that distribution. So it's going to show as the switch actually went down. And this avoids having the core up going to the distribution, but then the distribution is down and it makes troubleshooting a little bit more difficult. So this is very important. Press OK. And now we're going to do the same pattern for the second interface. Add virtual wire. And then this is our VLAN 10 sub interface and then we're going to select now the sub interface the ingress first and then the egress okay and tag allow we don't need to add anything to tag allow uh, because we're already tagging it on the interface press ok so now we got the interfaces the virtual wire connection so we're connecting virtually one two to one five and then we're connecting virtually the sub interface one two ten one two 1, 5, 10, sorry. And uh, yeah, once we do this, we should have that connectivity happening on the background. Okay. Now, in order for us to have connectivity, because we just isolated this VLAN 10 section to this VLAN 10 section, the ingress has been isolated from the egress. We're going to make some security policies for this. Go ahead and policies. And then on security, we're going to add... And again, we're discussing security on our next section. We're going to just deep dive into security policies. So don't worry about it. Okay. Name. We're going to say students to the outside because they want to go to the outside to the internet and they got to pass through the Palo Alto in order to hit the core switch. So we're going to go to source and at my zone. And we want to add that ingress student vWire interface. This is one slash two dot ten. Destination, obviously. The egress because we want to go out of the Palo Alto and then application everything else default and make sure that it's allowed. Click OK. Let's do the same thing for uh, backwards. So if for some reason the core wants to communicate to this VLAN interface and the traffic originates from the core side, then you want to allow the same thing backwards. So the egress becomes the ingress. Core to student VLAN 10. Source, in this case, will be the egress. Destination ingress we'll leave this as default we'll press ok and now we should be able to have everything in place and we should be able to ping end to end so let's press commit once that's done we'll give it a shot and we'll test okay it's done okay moment of truth let's take a look and see how that go let's um, let me pull my distribution and we should be able to ping 10 10 0 1. let's take a look at that boom and we got reachability okay how do you know that i'm actually passing the palo alto great question let's go ahead and uh, go to the palo alto and uh let's take a look so in every single security policy you have a hit count on the end if i was hitting policy or my traffic was actually matching this policy i should be able to see this incrementing it is zero but let's do a refresh and see if that changed. And there you go. We're seeing a hit count of four. And I believe four is the total of ICMP responses that we got. So there you go. We got one, got two, three, and four. And if we go back to the Palo Alto, 
we have four and then let's uh, refresh and it stayed at four so let's do another ping and see how that goes we go ahead and up arrow and now we have five head counts we should have five so one two three four five let's go ahead back and let's do a refresh and see if that incremented there you go you got five extra total of nine so that's how you know that this rewire interface is passing traffic in and out now I want to do the same backwards I want from the core ping my distribution and I will be coming from the egress and I will be going to the ingress so I should be able to see this incrementing and let's confirm we don't see any increments let's go ahead and uh, trigger so we can see some increments happening go back here and now we're gonna ping dot two which is my distribution side there you have it now we have five ping responses so by ICMP probes let's take a look let's go back in Palo Alto and uh, let me refresh and there you go now we got the five easy huh alrighty so once this is done you can continue doing the same the other sub interfaces and there you go no routing whatsoever it's Palo Alto is basically transparent once I have this I just need to add my subnets and classify specific traffic and you know the traffic or the pad doesn't know that it's passing through a stateful firewall so this is a very good way to police the traffic while keeping everything simplified okay so we reached the end of section three we're beginning section four and in this section we're going to discuss security policies routing contacts NAT and NAT options uh, this is a fun one so let's go ahead and get started on section four and thank you for watching